Welcome to Review Central. This is DOST reviewer number three, featuring questions in science. This reviewer is intended for those who are eyeing, or are set to take, the DOST scholarship qualifying exam. There are 15 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous DOST qualifying exams. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Now let's begin. Science question number one. Equal volumes of sediments as shown below are mixed and poured into a column of water. How will you pour the sediments to facilitate proper settling down into the column of water? A. Pebbles, silt, coarse sand, fine sand. B. Pebbles, coarse sand, fine sand, silt. C. Coarse sand, fine sand, pebbles, silt. D. Coarse sand, pebbles, silt, fine sand. The correct answer is B. Pebbles, coarse sand, fine sand, and silt, in that order. Answer choice B corresponds to the permeability characteristic of the materials, that is, from the most permeable to the least permeable. Science question number two. You come across a fossil that is believed to be petrified wood. You are curious to know how old this fossil is. What dating technique will you use to know the age? A. Relative dating, fossil succession. B. Relative dating, superposition. C. Absolute dating, potassium argon dating. D. Absolute dating, carbon dating. The correct answer is D. Absolute dating uses the isotopes present in a fossil to know the age of the fossil. Carbon dating is used for fossils that are organic and are up to 10,000 years old. Potassium argon is used for older fossils. Science question number three. Janela's Monday morning school activities include the following. 1. 15 minutes of break time spent eating at a table in the canteen. 2. 20 minutes to walk to the nearby lecture room in science. 3. 2 hours to attend the science lecture laboratory. 4. 20 minute walk to a nearby canteen. 5. An hour to attend a lecture in math. If you are Janela, which two activities do you think requires a change of speed and are not reasonable in doing the activity? A. 1 and 3 B. 1 and 5 C. 2 and 4 D. 3 and 4 The best answer is letter C. Activities 2 and 4 require a change of speed and are not reasonable. Let's examine and evaluate each of the answer choices to tell which are not reasonable and would require a change in speed. Activity 1, 15 minutes of break time spent eating at a table at the canteen. This activity requires a change of speed as Janela may be moving and then stops or is initially not moving then walks. However, a time element of 15 minutes for break is quite reasonable. Therefore, we can eliminate activity 1 as a possible answer. Activity 2, 20 minutes to walk to the nearby lecture room in science. This activity is not reasonable. Walking from the canteen to a nearby lecture room will not take more than 10 minutes to go to. Spending more than 10 minutes for this activity will not be reasonable. Therefore, this activity fits the description and what is asked in the problem. Activity 3, 2 hours to attend the science lecture laboratory. First, this activity does not involve a change in speed. Attending a lecture usually requires students to be seated and are therefore not moving. Spending two hours in a lecture is also quite normal and therefore, reasonable. We can also eliminate Activity 3 as a possible answer. Activity 4, 20-minute walk to a nearby canteen. Walking involves possible changes in speed. Just like with Activity 2, spending 20 minutes to walk to a nearby canteen is also not reasonable. Canteens are usually near and do not require more than 10 minutes to go to. Besides, it is clearly stated that the canteen is nearby. This fits the criteria. Activity 5, an hour to attend a lecture in math. Attending an hour of lecture usually does not require a change in speed. It is also usual for lecture sessions to be around an hour. In fact, most school lectures are about an hour. We can also eliminate this activity as a possible answer. 
This means that only options 2 and 4 are not reasonable and which involve a change in speed. Science question number 4. The propagation of a mechanical wave is described by the graph shown below. What is the wavelength of the wave? A. Pi B. 2 Pi C. 3 Pi D. 4 Pi The correct answer is B. The wavelength can always be determined by measuring the distance between any two corresponding points on adjacent waves, typically from crest to crest, or from trough to trough. Science question number 5. Calcium phosphates are historically known as good material for tooth replacement, repair of large bone defects caused by tumors and as injectable cement. One simple way of producing calcium phosphate is by collecting it from the reaction of calcium chloride and sodium phosphate. Write the balanced chemical equation to produce calcium phosphate. The correct answer is C. Among the answer choices, only C has a balanced chemical equation, and with the correct formula for the reactants and products. On both reactants and products there are 3 atoms of calcium 6 atoms of chlorine 6 atoms of sodium 2 atoms of phosphorus and 8 atoms of oxygen. Science question number 6. Using a compound microscope, you want to view a plant cell under a magnification of 100 times. Given that your eyepiece has a magnification of 10 times, which objective should you use to achieve your desired magnification? A. 10 times B. 90 times C. 100 times D. 110 times The correct answer is A. Magnification is the product of the magnification of the eyepiece and the objective used. To compute for the magnification of the objective, you should divide the overall magnification with that of the eyepiece. Therefore the magnification of the objective should be 100 times over 10 or 10 times. Science question number 7. Cacti and euphorbs have prominent sharp and pointed spines on the surface of their body. The spines of cactus and stem succulent euphorbia character that arose from a common evolutionary origin. What can be inferred from this character? A. This character is said to be analogous. B. This character is said to be homologous. C. This character is said to be discontinuous. D. This character is said to be homoplasious. The correct answer is B. This character is said to be homologous. The spines of cacti and thorns of euphorbia are homologous structures. The spines of cacti are modified leaves because they are created to protect the plants from herbivorous animals. In cactus, the stem is responsible for absorbing sunlight while leaves are used to provide safety and security to the plants. Science question number 8. Ceres is a 1000 km diameter rocky body which orbits the sun. What is the correct classification of Ceres? A. Asteroid B. Comet C. Meteor D. Meteorite The correct answer is A. Asteroid Asteroids, sometimes called minor planets, are rocky, airless remnants left over from the early formation of our solar system about 4.6 billion years ago. Ceres is the largest asteroid known to date. It is roughly as big as Alaska, and its spherical volume is about 27% as big as the moon's. Ceres is so much bigger and so different from its neighbors that scientists classified it as a dwarf planet in 2006. Science question number 9. A typhoon warning has been raised in your area. You are trying to determine the nearest town that you can evacuate to avoid the effects of the typhoon. Which of the following information will you need to look up? A. Diameter of the storm B. Maximum wind speed C. Amount of rainfall D. Movement speed The correct answer is A. 
You need to look up the diameter of the storm so you can determine which towns are likely to be affected and which ones are not. You wouldn't want to evacuate to a town that will also most likely be affected by the storm, would you? Science question number 10. A total solar eclipse was seen in the Philippines on October 24, 1995. Which of the following images shows the correct configuration of the Earth, Moon, and Sun during that time? The correct answer is C. During a total solar eclipse, the Moon is between the Sun and the Earth. If the Earth is between the Sun and the Moon, it is a lunar eclipse. A and B are impossible since the Moon rotates around the Earth. Science question number 11. Which of the following consumed the least amount of energy? A. 320-watt incandescent bulb used for 12 hours. B. A 5-watt LED bulb used for 24 hours. C. 360-watt electric fan used for 6 hours. D. 340-watt fluorescent lamp used for 10 hours. The correct answer is B. The formula for energy consumption given the power rating in watts and time in hours is, energy equals power times time divided by 1000. This will yield an answer in kilowatt hours. Assuming all other factors are equal, answer choice B consumes the least amount of energy, which is 0.12 kilowatt hour. Science question number 12. The red coloration of poinsettia, Euphorbia pulcherima, is caused by a combination of organic dyes found in the leaves. If you want to study these compounds, how would you design an experiment which will separate the pigments in the poinsettia leaves? A. First, boil the leaves to extract the mixture of dyes, filter, then distill the resulting solution. B. First, boil the leaves to extract the mixture of dyes, filter, then centrifuge the resulting solution. C. First boil the leaves to extract the mixture of dyes, filter, then evaporate the remaining solvent. B. First, boil the leaves to extract the mixture of dyes, filter, then perform chromatography using the resulting solution. The correct answer is D. The separation of the pigments from the solution can best be achieved via chromatography, since the basis of separation is polarity. Centrifugation would definitely not separate the pigments from the solution since they are both in liquid form. Distillation and evaporation may do, but not as effective as chromatography. Science question number 13. Using your knowledge of electronegativity, which of the following compounds is not ionic? A. C3H8 or propane B. BF2 or barium fluoride C. MgCl2 or magnesium chloride D. Ni or sodium iodide The correct answer is A. All of the given choices, except C3H8 are ionic compounds since they are formed by the complete transfer of electrons from a metal to a nonmetal. The covalent compound C3H8 is formed from sharing of electrons between two nonmetals. By the way, C3H8 is commonly known as propane, an organic compound which is also a paraffin hydrocarbon, similar to ethane or methane. Science question number 14. How is spermatogenesis different from oogenesis? A. Sperm cells take longer time to develop unlike in egg cells. B. Ovum is produced in continuous manner unlike in sperm production. C. There are prolonged interruptions in oogenesis unlike in spermatogenesis which occurs in constant manner. D. Spermatogenesis occurs at certain parts of childhood while oogenesis occurs only during adolescence. The correct answer is C, there are prolonged interruptions in oogenesis, that is, only once a month, unlike in spermatogenesis which occurs in a constant manner, that is, continuous, with millions of sperms produced on a daily basis. Spermatogenesis and oogenesis are the processes of formation of male and female gametes, 
Spermatogenesis leads to the formation of sperms, whereas oogenesis helps in the formation of ova. The fertilization of sperm and ova leads to the formation of a zygote which further develops into an embryo. Here is a table showing the differences between spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Science question number 15. Imagine you have a pet animal called Lady Luck. Lady Luck is fat and she has a very thick fur coat. She also likes to sleep for months at a time. After a year in your house in the Philippines, you notice that Lady Luck is suffering. You then decide to release her back to her natural habitat. Which biome do you think is right for her? A. Desert B. Tundra C. Savannah D. Tropical Rainforest the correct answer is B, Tundra. Animals that live in Tundra should have rich fat reserves that they need to nourish their bodies during their hibernation period. They also need a thick fur coat to insulate them from the extreme cold temperature in this biome. In physical geography, Tundra is a type of biome where tree growth is hindered by frigid temperatures and short growing seasons. Tundra ecosystems are treeless regions found in the Arctic and on the tops of mountains, where the climate is cold and windy, and rainfall is scant. Tundra lands are covered with snow for much of the year, but summer brings bursts of wildflowers. You have just completed DOST Reviewer number 3, which featured questions in science. If you wish to watch more DOST Reviewers in Science, check out our DOST Science playlist. Check out also our other DOST playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, Please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share it to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming DOST scholarship qualifying exam.